Okay, I am getting ready to start reading Powerless by Lauren Roberts. But we are buddy reading this as like a whole group of us. Um, it started out with Michelle and I doing our buddy read and then we mentioned it to other people and now it has become a large community event. And I'm very excited for this because <laughs> we all have been talking about how Cassidy read this book and her vlog was so entertaining where she talked about how much she loved this book because despite it being not the best <laughs> and honestly she has been trying to dissuade people from reading it but I I cannot be dissuaded. Michelle and I have had this on our buddy reading list for so long and we were coordinating our Libby holds on the audio or like my physical library copy for so long that when it finally came in I was like I don't care. I don't care that Cassidy may or may not be recommending this for people. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. Her vlog was inspiring <laughs> as she talked about the like I don't know, like low quality writing, but high quality good time. And that's all I'm here for. I'm here for a good time, especially like books in this style. Like I feel like with fantasy, I am trying to be a lot less critical because like the whole point for me is reading and like the escapism of it, of like putting yourself into a world that you don't want to stop reading. And so that's what I'm looking for in this. I don't care if it's bad writing. I mean, some bad writing can hinder the like reading experience but like I'm just here for a good time and I'm very excited to read this and we have a discord chat going on for everyone to post updates as they're reading we are doing 100 pages a day so I'm very excited to get started with this and we'll see where we go okay I'm back with my update for the first 100 pages I'm not gonna do an update every single day for every 100 pages because this thing is a chonker it is like 500 pages I'm not going to update every single day, but after reading the first 100 pages, I do want to just give a little bit of an update as to what's going on, what I understand to be happening, and just some other details. So this is a world with like some sort of like an element of magic where there are the people, the elite that have these powers, and then there's the ordinaries. And in this world, the ordinaries are killed on sight, they, they are not allowed to continue to exist as a way of like weeding out the weak, I guess. And so the king is the one who sets this precedent and the two main characters, we have two main characters, Payton and Kai. Kai is the son of the king and he is the enforcer. He's the one that's sent out to take care of these ordinaries as they are discovered. And Payton, we learn very quickly, is an ordinary. She does not have a power and so she lives in the slums, but she, hides the fact that she's an ordinary and lies about being a psychic which i think is very interesting it's one of the like lower level magics that's easier to kind of cover up that she doesn't actually have a power she basically just uses her like innate ability to read people really well and to use very small details and she just can i don't know like pick up on very I'm trying to think of what the word is but basically she is just really good at reading people and reading a, a scenario within seconds and being able to put words to what that can mean and i think that's super super cool and it's going to come in handy a lot but basically this is in very hunger games theme this has a competition the purging where elites are put into this trial or multiple trials where they compete to see who is the best who's the most powerful the strongest whatever and i don't think this is like a competition to the death like the hunger games is but i do think that this is like death is possible and so it is a risk going into the games but it's a lot of elites who want to be like it's a it's an honor to be a part of the this competition and so that's like an interesting approach. Well, in the first 100 pages, we learn, it's very obvious that Payton is going to be part of the games, but in the first 100 pages, we learn how and why she becomes a contestant in the games, despite not wanting to. And now she is faced with the 
difficulty of hiding the fact that she is an ordinary from a bunch of people who are elite who have powers and knowing that she does not belong there so it's very interesting setup and i am really really loving this so far i don't know where we're gonna go with the next 400 pages but for the first 100 i'm really really enjoying this and i feel like it is giving me just like a feel-good vibe like i'm just i'm just having a good time cassidy mentioned that <laughs> the, the main male character kai speaks in one-liners and it's 100 percent true the first time you meet him everything he says could have come straight out of a handbook for how to be mysterious and sexy with a stranger in the street <laughs> and honestly it was just very funny so like i'm enjoying i'm enjoying it it's great i do appreciate that this is from two perspectives we get Peyton and kai's perspective and it's nice because the audiobook also has two narrators so we do get those two different voices and i think it's a little bit different than I feel like most books that have two perspectives and that is because we actually do see some re repetition in the scenes. We see the first time they meet, we get it from Peyton's perspective and then like another chapter later, we get it from Kai's perspective, which should seem repetitive and kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's not because we are getting more of what's in his mind while the scene is happening and I really appreciate that because I I love getting both sides of the story and getting to see what's in their minds and I, I can really appreciate the way that it's written that it does not feel like it's repetitive and annoying so I'm I'm having such a good time with this and I cannot wait to keep going with this book I have a feeling that it's going to have me in that like giddy like oh my gosh I don't want to put this down kind of feeling so I'm I'm excited I have no regrets over reading this so far and honestly if I end up liking it as much as I think I am based on the first 100 pages I will be buying this for myself after this because I am I am already loving it and I can't wait to see where else we go with it. Excuse my look it is very cold in my house and I don't feel like going over to adjust the thermostat, so I'm just wearing my giant sweatshirt hoodie. Anyway, I'm not really giving a full update on this because I don't want to do that many updates, but I just <laughs> need to tell you something that I laughed at so hard, and that is, first of all, we've established that this is um, very similar to The Hunger Games, the concept of the trials, all of that. It's very similar. Well, the Hunger Games were televised, right? Well, these trials are also somewhat televised. I'm not sure to what extent, but <laughs> when they go into the first trial, we discover that in the past it's been just like projected, but here it's being recorded to be played back later, but it's played back by people. <laughs> who it's their gift like everybody in this world like all of the elite have a special power and some of them are like telekinesis some of them are really fast movement some of them can disappear you know all that kind of random stuff make fire okay great well one of these abilities is as i think what did they call it a sight and their purpose is as a like human, like a person, <laughs> with their eyeballs, they record what they see and then can play it back <laughs> later. And he like makes a comment about how it's like really creepy that they can like just stand there and stare blankly and like it would record. <laughs> just imagining like waking up in this environment where they are for the trial and waking up and just seeing a strange man like looming over you like recording what's happening like recording you waking up or like running away and <laughs> it's just a very funny concept to me that it's a creepy guy who's just standing there and staring and recording it all so that the audience can like watch it back later that's all that's all I wanted to say other than that I'm enjoying this book so far I'm having a great time it's it's a great time that's it so good seeing your strikes again. <laughs> oh my god. I wanna go to a fancy ball. What the heck? Oh my god, he's down so bad. 
not expected. My dude, why would you expect anything different from her? Oh my god. A reminder of who she is and what she did. That's right. <laughs> savage. We're like the silver savage. I love it. You go, Peyton. Wait, that's a really good line. I'm not wearing green, but I feel it nonetheless. That is, that's a good line. I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. <laughs> oh God, he's down so bad for her. And I am living for this. Literally the next word on the page is no. <laughs> as much pain as you are my my friend but um i'm in pain from the roller coaster of this book with the not win because I made myself lunch which was just going to be this nice lean cuisine lasagna thing because it's really late to be eating lunch anyway and um yeah this is what I see <laughs> why why I followed the instructions. It says to uncover it. I uncovered it. What is this nonsense? <sighs> I'm giving another update on this book. I'm giving way more updates than I need to, but I can't stop thinking about this book and being obsessed with it and just needing to talk about it because this book is everything. And I feel like it's really hard to even put my thoughts to words. But I am now four-fifths of the way, so, like, I will be finishing this tomorrow, and I am obsessed with the relationship, the drama, the banter, the action that's happening, all of it, everything together. It's just, it's everything I want in a book. It's making me feel the things that I want to feel when I'm reading. I, the fact that I put it down and it's hard to put it down and I simply just want to pick it back up again immediately. That's what I want in the reading experience and that's what I'm getting from this. And I just don't even like, I don't understand. I don't understand how this book is doing this to me. I am simply obsessed with Kai and Peyton and Kit even, like all of it. But I am so unbelievably stressed because I have secondhand anxiety when I'm reading and when I'm faced with difficult situations with characters and in this book there is a betrayal that you know is coming and like it physically pains me like I don't know if I can handle it when it like when shit hits the fan can I handle it I doubt it I don't I don't think I can because <laughs> I 
I am attached to everybody in this story. I have strong emotions for everything that's happening. And I just know that when all hell breaks loose, I am going to lose my mind. <laughs> so now I'm like mentally and emotionally trying to prepare myself for the ending of this book. Because... I'm I'm not going to be okay. Like I am going to lose my mind. So at this time tomorrow, there may not be a Monica anymore because I will simply pass away after finishing this book and whatever the heck it's going to do to me and my emotional health because I I should not be this attached to a story, especially a story that is so similar like it just it feeds from a lot of other stories specifically like there is a lot of Hunger Games comparison and I feel like the section that we read today was actually probably the least Hunger Games e out of <laughs> the the day's readings that we've done so far but still I just I can't get enough of this I really can't the complexity of what's going on the revolutions that are going on behind the scenes kind of behind the scenes but like the relationship it's it's a slow burn in the fact that like ah, they will not just like give in and like admit and they've admitted how they feel but they won't do anything about it like they're still just being so I don't know like nervous or I don't know hesitant to 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 do anything but oh my god I love it so much it's like slow burn but not slow burn because they've been like in each other's business for the entire book but also dancing around the like deep truths and I'm just like oh my god <laughs> I need help because this book should not be affecting me so much but like I'm loving it so much and I cannot wait to finish it tomorrow but also I'm afraid to finish it tomorrow because I'm afraid of what it's going to do to me and then I have to wait for the second one to come out and the second one <laughs> is going to be out for another like seven months so yeah this is going to be rough but this book has my heart right now <sighs> and by this time tomorrow it may very well be broken. powerless and I feel like the shell of a person <laughs> this book has caused feelings in me that I have not tapped into in a long time I think it's similar feelings to when I read fourth wing and iron flame as far as being able to evoke like an emotional reaction to what's happening in the book but uh, this felt so different in so many different ways that like I I cannot get enough of this I'm actually really mad that this is a library copy because 
I need my own copy and I have full intentions of rereading this probably when the sequel comes out I will have my own copy and I will reread this and I think I'm gonna try to annotate because there were some really really beautiful lines in this book I thought it was very well written honestly yes it everything that Kai says is a one-liner everything he says is meant to be a zinger but at the same time some of those lines were really really beautiful and I found myself like <laughs> if you were real I would be in love with you just the things that he said and you could tell that they were authentic he wasn't just pulling things out of his rear end like I <laughs> the writing it just something about it was very very emotion driven and I really loved that and along with that every time a scene was written regarding grief or pain or something that is a more negative emotion I feel like it was written so viscerally anytime either Kai or Peyton experienced some sort of close person's injury or death in this book I feel like the scenes were just written so beautifully that made me feel the pain. I know there were some other people, because we were buddy reading this, a whole bunch of us reading at the same time, and I know there were some other people who had opinions about the fact that some of the side characters don't have a lot of backstory, and so it was kind of hard to feel anything for them or really care what happened to any of the characters that were not specifically Kai or Peyton. Or I guess Kit in some respects. But I agree with this statement. However, I also feel like the way that it was written and the scenes where Kai and Peyton are interacting with those characters, even if we don't really know a whole lot about them or care too much particularly about what happens, I feel like the beauty in those scenes was reading their emotional response to them, knowing how much Peyton loved the people around her who meant a lot to her knowing the way that Kai felt about people in his life and if things were to happen to them what that would feel like I am heartbroken like there were some seriously beautifully written scenes of grief and pain and that I think is such an accomplishment when you don't necessarily feel a super close connection to the character that is dying but to be able to still feel very upset because of how overwhelmed by emotion the character is and how it's written I just I loved it I loved I loved it I loved everything about this book because on top of all of that I felt the actual sting of betrayal like, I knew it was coming. I knew what was coming at the end of the book, but I still felt the pain. And I felt the punch of when the shoe drops and you're just left with, like, what? <laughs> what? <sighs> I am very, very excited for the next book because I feel like this left off at a really, really great, not cliffhanger, but a lead up for what's to come. Am I happy with where it goes? No, <laughs> but I also think it was written really well and it's a compelling story. So even if I wish things were left off at a different place, I do feel like it. what was written was really good and it really does set us up for a sequel that is going to be heart-wrenching and I don't know if I'm ready but I'm also ready like I'm ready now and I need it now but I have to wait like six months seven months I don't even know but I'm very very happy that I read this book and I have so many emotions and I feel like I'm gonna be processing this for the next like three to five business days so if you hadn't guessed I am going to give this book a full five stars and also I'm giving it my whole heart and soul because it did something to me. I also feel like maybe some of the reason why I loved this book so much is it reminded me so much of other beloved stories that I've read. Like, it's very similar to The Hunger Games. It's very similar to The Hunger Games. In more ways than I even anticipated, <laughs> honestly. Like, even by the end of the book, I, I it was still happening. Like, things were still like, oh, that was Hunger Games coded. However, 
I'm not mad. I'm not mad about it because I freaking loved it. Like, I loved every minute of it. Also find it very, very beautiful that in this book, the romance that we get feels so different from a lot of other romantices. Was very long and stretched out, but it was so tender when it happened. I mean, the dancing and the lingering stares and the delicate touches and the the snuggling. Oh, like it's precious and beautiful. Don't doubt for a minute their dedication to the other. You don't doubt their feelings at all. They know their feelings, kind of, and they know the feeling like the other's feelings for them kind of, but the traditional representations of romance, the kissing, the sex scenes, the things like that are absent for so much of this book. And honestly, I really, really liked that because it builds a sexual tension that is so strong that not even Peyton's dagger could cut through. I am so shocked by the tension and the ability for it to grip me and never let me go. And maybe that's one of my favorite parts of this book. Honestly, I think it is now that I'm thinking more about it. Like, I think the tension is the best thing to me. It is what I was feeding on. It was what helped me feel like I couldn't let go of the story. And it's what's got me now in a chokehold waiting for the next book to come. So the like romantic and sexual tension in this book is beyond anything that I could imagine. So between that tension, the bantering that was quite literally on every single page and was spectacular. I, I don't I don't care. It was cheesy as heck and everything that I asked for. And just the strong characters and also a very strong plot. I do think it had a strong storyline and we're going a lot of different places that I'm really excited to see. And all of these things bring this book together to be one of my favorite books of the year. Like I'm just saying it now. I think it's going to be in my top 10 of 2023. So five stars to Powerless. If I could give it more, I probably would because I'm going to be thinking about this book for a very long time. I guess I'm done working today. Mm -hmm.